SBF has, has resulted in me looking into a lot of stuff about effective altruism. I do find it very interesting. I watched this tech talk by William McCaskill. This is, this is basically the uh, the sales pitch he gave Sam Bankman-Fried when he met him. Basically, Sam Bankman-Fried met this guy, William McCaskill, I believe at MIT, when uh, Sam Bankman-Fried was just this uh, super intelligent maths nerd. SBF had been looking into sort of Peter Singer's work for a while. Peter Singer is like this utili utilitarianist. Is that what you call it? Utilitarianist? who basically believes that um, they call units of happiness utils. Their philosophy is you should do whatever increases the happiness of most humans on Earth at any one time. And they calculate that very mathematically. And they, and they calculate it in, in units called utils. SBF himself decided that he was pro-choice because he worked out mathematically that the, the amount of utils were higher if you allowed abortion Show what you got <laughs> that fucking scared the shit out of me he worked out that the number of utils gained were higher if you allowed people to choose to have an abortion it's a very sort of ex extremely mathematical way of looking at the world because sbf has a very sort of like mathematical brain I guess it's not surprising that he looked at the world like that and he thought that you could sort of work everything out, you could figure everything out using mathematical code. It's also a very crypto way of looking at the world as well, isn't it? Just just believing that everything can be coded, that all of the issues in the world can be coded somehow. It's a very sort of crypto-centric way of looking at the world. William McCaskill basically promotes this idea that you can work out through his mathematical equations, the way that you can do the most good in the world. And it's a very sort of Silicon Valley tech bro, I'm the main character syndrome way of looking at everything. It's, it's, it's a bit of a God complex. It's like, I, I know what's best for everyone in the entire world because I've done some little, little equations on my computer. It's that kind of mentality. Philosophy and research program that we call effective altruism. It tries to respond to these radical changes in our world, it uses evidence and careful reasoning to try to answer this question. How can we do the most good? Now, there are many issues you've got to address if you want to tackle this problem, <laughs> whether to do good through your charity or your career or your political engagement, what programs to focus on, who to work with. Sam bankman frieds philosophy was he considered everything in, in probabilities. So the way that he wanted to approach his effective altruism was to take a chance at making as much money as he possibly could, whilst being aware that it could fail. And obviously it did fail in the end, it catastrophically failed. But in his mind, there were also these probabilities of other Sam bankman frieds that went on to succeed and did great in the world and made billions and billions and billions of dollars and then went to donate it to all of these accepted charities Charities that are accepted by the effective altruism movement, i.e. accepted by William McCaskill. That's kind of what was going through his brain. And in, and in the mind of many other effective altruists as well, it's like it doesn't matter if you're fucking over people in the present. As long as you're taking your chances of like being able to help these prospective 10 to the 54 humans in the future, as long as you're taking the chances to be able to help all of those humans, it doesn't matter if you fuck over a load of humans who are actually alive right now. It's just such a fucked up way of looking at the world. It's just so, so removed from reality. Yeah, it's like an extremely fucked up ends justify the means mentality. Yes. Is the, is the human race even really worth preserving? We hear all the time about how things have been getting worse. But I think that when we take the long run, things have been getting radically better. Here, for example, is life expectancy over time. Here is the proportion of people not living in extreme poverty. Here is the number of countries over time that have decriminalized homosexuality. Here is the number of countries over time that have become democratic. Then, when we look to the future... These graphs 
are giving me like Prager U vibes. Incredibly oversimplified, undersourced. <laughs> like where where did you get where did you get these numbers from? It just seems like you're very much simplifying everything. Of all the many problems that the world faces, which should we be focused on trying to solve first? Now, I'm going to give you a framework for thinking about this question, and the framework is very simple. A problem is higher priority, the bigger, the more easily solvable, and the more neglected it is. Rocco is bas basculist, but with an imagined 1054 humans instead of a lifetime traveling AI. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know what Rocco's basilisk is, basically it's a thought experiment, isn't it? That you should do everything you can to help to bring about AI that's more powerful than humans. Because if you don't, then that AI will travel back in time and like severely punish you. That's Roko's Basilisk, right? And then like everybody got really fucked up thinking about it and had like nightmares about it. <sighs> the second big priority is factory farming. This is super neglected. There are 50 billion land animals. Use every. That's why Sam Bankman Freed became vegan while he was at MIT. Although there is rumor that he was eating shrimp in the Bahamas. <laughs> Imagine if you're getting on a plane and you're kind of nervous, and the pilot reassures you by saying, "There's only a one in a thousand chance of crashing. Don't worry." Would you feel reassured? That was what SBF was thinking. What are, What are the chances of me crashing? this crypto exchange and effectively stealing the money of millions of people. What are the chances of me doing that? I could either do that, or there's also this other chance that I could be a multi-billionaire and uh, save the entire world and be a superhero. So that's another huge problem with like effective altruism is they'll promote this whole philosophy of make as much money as you possibly can so you can give away as much money as you possibly can. But it doesn't really dictate when you're done, when you've made enough money to give away and you should stop. So like Sam Bankman Freed for a while, he was working at Jane Street. He was doing arbitrage at Jane Street Capital in New York. He was making bag and he was actually giving half of his salary to Effective Altruism. And Effective Altruism, the, um, the organization, i.e. William McCaskill, would be divvying that up to charities that he deemed you know, deserving of that money. But then when crypto started to become quite a big thing, like in 2017, Sam Bankman Freed was like, hang on a minute, I could be making more money in uh, this crypto ecosystem. And he did. He did make a fuck ton more money. That was when he stopped giving away half of his income to effective altruism. And he thought, you know what? I'm just going to try and make as much money as possible. And that's when he started fucking over literally everybody he possibly could and got extremely like drunk on power. And like, that's the problem with these like billionaires thinking that they're altruists. It's like, well, when, when do you stop thinking, oh, I need to make more money to give it away? When do you believe that you've made enough money to give away? Like there's, there's no like cutoff point there, is there? And then you get drunk on power and drunk on the amount of money that you're making that you just think actually you know what I could do more good in the world if I actually instead of giving this money away I just reinvest it to make even more money and more money and snowball it and snowball it and snowball it into this massive amount and then I could give loads more money away but that but that snowballing never ends because you just get drunk on this power of oh I could make more money and more money and more money and more money and that was this whole mentality that he got into when he was doing massive amounts of fraud at FTX and with with the uh, Alameda research and just basically stealing people's money because he was in this mindset where he was just like so drunk on power and so convinced that nothing could stop him at this point that he was like I'm I'm gonna give billions and billions and billions away to the, to the most needy people in the world. It's it's a completely flawed ideology and, it, and it, it doesn't stop anyone from becoming extremely greedy and power hungry. Unfortunately, humans will be humans. It's not like there's a lobby representing the interests of those born in 2300 AD. They don't get to influence the decisions we make today. They're voiceless. Like he's just assuming that humans aren't kind of trying to do that anyway. He's like, no, no one's thought 
of trying to solve this problem. They have thought of it. It's just there's just insane issues that are stopping us from solving those problems, i.e. capitalism. But no, guys, we can fix it with more capitalism. Yeah! And that's basically how effective altruism works. Just pump all of your money into these freak Silicon Valley tech bros because they know what's best for the world. They know they know what to do with it. Pump it all into blockchain technology. Why not? 